guys, Late Boy Scout here to report to you on my third day at Front Sight. Third day, we went straight to the range. Now, this was actually a different range than we spent day one and day two at. So we went to that new range a little further down in the second phase of the development, the second phase of Front Sight. And at that new range, we started off by reviewing what we had learned at the previous night's lecture, um, talking about working our way around corners and into hallways and so forth. We reviewed all those points that we had talked about during that lecture and um, did some demonstrations and worked on how those are actually taken care of. And one of the things we talked about, one of the things we worked on was footwork, which is very important and uh, something that I've gotten wrong in the past. But they pointed out to us uh, basically the right way to do it. Now your feet should always be about shoulder length apart. Now, if you're in your bladed stance, about 30, de 30 degree, okay, they're about shoulder width apart, and that's correct, okay? Now, if you're going to be cornering, as in moving around a doorway or to, uh, to examine a corner, approaching a hallway, something like that, you want to move, do side steps, but you want to do them slow and small. And uh, they said four inches is about right, so make it a four inch step and trail. By step and trail, I mean, your right foot, in this case, since I'm a right-handed person or since I'm approaching a doorway in that direction, right foot would go about four inches, the left foot would trail it about another four inches. Four inches, another four inches, four inches, another four inches. Now this seems like a very small amount, but this allows you to keep the stability that you need to have in case at any one of those, on any one of those steps you actually have to take a shot, if that makes sense. So, that whole time you stay bladed off, you, you're down and low ready, okay, and you're taking your steps, okay, four inches at a time, okay, as if I'm, if I'm approaching a corner over here, this is what I'm doing, I've got my gun over here so I can see where I'm, see what I'm approaching, okay, and then as I reach that corner, in order to lean and see that, you don't want to like put all your weight on the other foot because then you're off balance and because you're giving a little bit too much of yourself to the target. What you want to do is throw your hips out the opposite direction, rotate your body just enough, rotate your head and your, your firearm just enough so that you can actually get a shot off if you had to. And uh, that way you're balanced better, but you're also achieving the lean that you need to achieve. So that's what we learned about footwork and how to make those motions. Next, this was very cool, we went to an area that they call the Monsters Inc. area because it's just a bunch of doors sticking out of the ground, like from the movie Monsters, Inc., right? It's just a bunch of doors, right? Okay, if you remember, you know what I'm talking about. Just a bunch of doors sticking out of the ground, and there was an uh, instructor at each one, and he took us in groups, and one by one, we did the cornering, and then we did the door. Now, doors were a little bit different. When you approach that door, you're approaching at sort of a 45-degree angle, low ready, okay? All right, let's say the handle is right about here, now what I need to do is bring this, bring my handgun into this position, okay? And the reason for that is I don't want to cover my hand. Let's say the doorknob is right there, okay? Then I'm covering my my hand with that gun. Understand? So the point, so what you want to actually do is bring this high, all right? Now it's still pointed the direction you need it to be pointed, but at that point you can manipulate that door handle and then you throw it violently open, okay? And as soon as you do that, back up, and you're back into low ready or high, whatever the case may be, if you have a target there. And you want to throw that hard because you know your home, and if this is your home, you know what's on the other side of that door, and you know where it's going to stop. And if it doesn't stop there, perhaps there's somebody on the other side of that door, okay? So that's going to give you an indicator and a clue as to what's going on inside that room. By throwing that hard, that becomes a feedback device to tell you what's in there. Then at that point, you can see directly into the room. You've got a field of vision from where you're at, where you're at but you need to increase that. So first, you increase it. Uh, you want to see the rest of the room that's over here. By that, in order to do that, you need to move, again, your four inch steps, okay? And while you're doing this, by the way, I didn't mention this before, as you're doing this, your eyes are scanning up and down, up and down, okay? You're low ready, you're prepared to take a shot at any time. 
four steps, trail, step and trail, step and trail, step and trail. And you continue to do this until you're at, at this stage and you can see whatever happens to be in that, in that end of the room, okay? You can see all the way down there and you know it's clear, okay? Then you move back to the previous position and then you step and trail, step and trail, step and trail, doing a half circle slowly and scanning up and down the whole time, okay? Scanning up and down the whole time and continue to do that all the way to the other end of the room till you've seen everything that you know could be in that room, okay? Then at that point, you just bring yourself back to a 45 degree angle and then you enter that room fairly quickly. But another thing you need to do, let's say the doorway is right about here, okay? Another thing you need to do is, as you're getting ready to enter that room, you've got it a little ready here. When you get to that doorway, you need to bring the gun in close again on the off chance that there is somebody on either side of that doorway that you missed and you don't want to introduce yourself to them by way of that gun where they could grab it out of your hand somehow or whatever. So what you want to do is as you approach that doorway you bring it in and then right back out again. But after you bring it in you look quickly and do a side to side to ensure what you've, what you've already ensured. But it's just kind of a second look to be sure that there is in fact nobody in that room. So it looks about like this. You're approaching the doorway here, you bring it in, and then you're done. Okay? And of course, not done necessarily, but you go through the door. That's how you do the doorway. After that, we moved back to the range that we were at, where we, since we had to go to those doors in shifts, we spent more time working on the fundamentals that we worked on the previous two days. Uh, malfunction drills different mag change drills, things like that. We worked on all those, tactical reloads, um, other reloads, and um, just kind of honed those skills a little bit until it was time to go to an actual simulation. Now this was really cool and the highlight of the day for me. We went to an actual shoot house there on the front side property. Now they had set this up in a way and you know divided it in such a way that as we got to the waiting area, we had no idea what was waiting for us beyond that, okay? And they wouldn't tell us. They wouldn't tell us anything about it. Um, there were some clues from the previous day that I didn't know were clues until I actually got in there. Uh, the previous day, I think I told you, we were shooting at photographic targets. And uh, there were different targets with actual guns in their hands, different people of different ages, an old man with a big revolver, a woman pulling a gun out of her purse, uh, a little boy, a guy with a weird mask on, lots of different, lots of different characters, okay? And they're all in these photographic targets. And so we kind of became accustomed to all those photographic targets. We didn't know some of those targets, some of those photographic targets have variations, have little changes, <laughs> have one that looks identical except the guy's not holding a gun anymore, now he's holding something else. The woman's not holding a gun, now she's holding something else. And you have to realize there as you're approaching this target that that is not a threat. You saw it as a threat the previous day, but today it's not a threat. So don't shoot it, okay? So this simulation was very cool. It was, uh, I ended up doing pretty well at it compared to some of the other guys that I talked to. And I was very happy about that. Not that they did badly, but really, got, really glad that I did pretty well. And uh, my instructor seemed to think I did pretty well. Uh, my shot placement was okay, but um, for the most part, I did a good job of not shooting the people that, it, that I was not supposed to shoot and hitting the people that I was supposed to shoot. Basically, it was a very cool experience. Used all the stuff that I learned before, cornering and you know, getting through doorways, choosing your targets and being ready to shoot and all that kind of stuff. It was everything that I learned the previous few days and that morning were put into effect in that uh, shoot house scenario and that was, uh, like I said, the highlight of the day, but not the end of the day. After that, we went back to that range and we talked about shooting at higher speeds and about misaligned sights and how from very close ranges, misaligned sights don't really matter because you can still hit your target within the thoracic cavity uh, with misaligned sights taking very quick shots in rapid succession, okay? And what they talked about in particular were, and they did a demonstration actually, from about five yards, showing that if your sights were 
if your uh, if your sight was off this way, you know, you would still hit the thoracic cavity off this way, and he basically made kind of a, you know, kind of a 12, 3, 6, 9 on the target, uh, showing us that with you know all those shots were still within the thoracic cavity from that distance, even though his sights were all the way over here, all the way over there, all the way down, all the way up. The point being, you can still get kill shots or stopping shots without getting your sights completely and properly aligned. And that's valuable information because when adrenaline takes over and you are up close, taking the time to align your sights and slowly press the trigger does not help you, okay? Get shots off in their direction and you'll probably take them down. After that, we went to lunch, and that was accompanied by a very nice lecture talking about uh, pistol, rifle, and shotgun choices, as well as accessories to add or to avoid adding uh, to your gun. Also, um, modifications, ways to modify your guns. It was very sort of open-ended, very informational. Some of the stuff I already knew, but it was good advice nonetheless. Really appreciated it, really enjoyed that. And directly after that, went straight back to the range where we started off discussing concealed carry and also methods for concealed carry. And they spent a good 30 minutes or more just talking about um, all these valid ways to conceal carry. And it was very, um, it was enlightening, but it was also very sort of validating. Because I feel like as long as you have a gun and you train with it, whatever position you carry it in, doesn't matter. And that was pretty much what the instructor expressed. Now, he also expressed, however, that strong side hip carry is the best method. And if you can manage that, that's the best way to carry. And that's pretty much the only way we trained with following uh, that discussion. Now, um, we only also trained with an open covering as a uh, concealment option. That's the only thing we trained with. So they said, look, other options are okay. Other options can be used and maybe have to be used depending on what your life situation is, what your work situation is, whatever you do. Other concealment options may have to be employed, but the key is practice, practice, practice with them. Know them inside and out, understand your draw, understand you know, whatever it is, however you pull it out, whether it's an ankle or something else, practice with it, be familiar with it, understand how to get that out of there and present it properly. From there, we went straight into training to shoot from concealment. This was my covering, the shirt that I wore underneath it. So this was my concealment for the day, here's my holster my mag pouches. This became my concealment for the day. And we trained with our concealment on. We did various drills from different distances, all of which were done with this concealment on. And the essential method that he taught uh, for drawing from this type of concealment is simply this. Uh, it's very much the same as the standard presentation in which your weak side hand comes up and your right hand does all the manipulation of your firearm. However, uh, in this drill, your right hand, your, your strong hand, obviously has to cup in a cupping motion, as a hooking motion, has to cup that garment, sweep it back hard, and hard enough that it literally slaps your back, okay? Like, like so, okay? You sweep it hard. So the weak hand side comes up, sweep back, and reach down and do your presentation on the one, two, the three, okay, all in one fluid motion. But it looks kind of like, okay, and that's its, that's the presentation from concealment. Now, to reholster from concealment, it's um, not exactly the same thing reversed to holster from concealment from this method. It's a matter of taking your weak side hand, taking that garment and tucking it up underneath your strong side arm, getting your strong side arm tight against your abdomen, your chest, and then keeping it tight as you pull that back, 
return to three, two, and one to safely holster. And then reloading is basically just that, okay, on the opposite side, okay. We spent a lot of time working on drawing and presenting from concealment. Then we moved on to a one ragged hole drill, which was also very fun because we didn't have to worry about any drills at this point. It was simply a matter of working on trigger control, sight alignment, sight picture, those three secrets that help you get real accuracy and good accuracy. And that was fun, especially because I did pretty well with it. Uh, there was one other guy on the line that did about as well as I did, and everybody else uh, was <laughs> did not do very well. So it was pretty encouraging to see this. And there's my first one at the bottom. Okay, and that's about a one inch square. And then there's my second one at the top. And it is one ragged hole. And that was only from five yards. Okay, nothing impressive, no 25 yard shot. Still, encouraging, encouraging. And like I said, there's only one other guy on the line that I saw that did this well. Everybody else, palm sized, pizza sized. From that point we worked on failure drills and we really needed to work on these because it just needed to be drilled into our heads and I guess that's why they call them the drills. And we learned about dry failure drills, which, and we learned that you know you can do dry failure drills with no ammunition in the gun. It just takes a lot of imagination. You gotta just imagine that that failure is happening and go through the steps that it takes to clear it. And sometimes it's just as effective to have no gun in your hand at all and just pantomime your way through the whole thing. So thank you all for watching. I'm the late Boy Scout giving you my front sight, V-Log, day three. We'll see you on day four. See ya.